What's poppin' T subs and T squad? So listen, disclaimer. Um <clears throat> Jen, you are the precise reason why this video is coming now versus last night. Because I got a feeling how I did it last night. I wouldn't even have bothered to monetize the video. Cause it wouldn't have been a review. It would have been in a uh in, in, in um what look, what's the word for it? It would have been a um an evisceration of you. I would have took 10 minutes just straight up going in and letting have on you. Cussing you out from the Rudy to the Tootie. Bitch, you would have been everything else but a child of God once I got done wrapping your ass up. And I said, you know what? In 2021, I refuse to let any of these reality TV hoes get me up, get me all up, all upset, all up in my bag. Had me heavily invested in this shit because it could all just be fake beef to keep the show so that the show could come back around for the second season. I don't know. But yeah, you the reason why I had to go to sleep, think on it and get back up and do this again. Um, <clears throat> Real Housewives of Salt Lake City from last night, girl. This is still season one. This is episode. I'm trying to get my notes, child. So forgive me. This is episode, get the hell off of here, 11, all bets are off. Hopefully, I can get through this without getting upset and I can stay on task. <coughs> Excuse me. So, Whitney is having a dinner at her house and she's inviting her uh, brother Will and her sister Shaylee and her dad Steve. They talk about his road to recovery and how they heard it all before. And this time, they want to see some progress and he invites the three of them to do a process group with him. <coughs> Excuse me, girl. Um, It's the weed. I ain't even gonna lie to y'all bitches. It's the weed, okay? It ain't COVID. It's the weed. Um, Because when you sitting in a house and you really ain't got that much to do because COVID is running them up, all you can do is smoke, drink, fuck, play the game, and go to sleep and eat. Um, So don't judge me, bitch. Judge your mammy. Um... <clears throat> I'm all down for Steve trying to make the best out of the situation. And I'm all down for Steve inviting um, his children to do the group process, especially Shaylee and Will. The two of them seem to be more on the fence as far as the relationship goes between the two of them and Steve. It seems like Whitney is really the one who's making the biggest effort out of, out of the Charon. It seems like Whitney is the one who's making the biggest effort. And listen, it's not they're not doing this because they hate him. I get it. When you've constantly gone down a road of, I'm going to do better, 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 and better never comes, as much as you love the person and as much as you want them to get better, you then come to the realization that maybe they won't be. And maybe this is just somebody that you can't save. You know what I'm saying? And it hurts when it's a parent or a child, but sometimes the best medicine or the best remedy or the best course of action to do is to walk away. I think Steve not having the full support of his family and all of his children, he lost his marriage, he fell out of the graces of the church and all that good stuff, not to mention that your real life is being depicted all over um, these good Joe Biden and Kamala Harris streets. Um, you know, yeah, I, I, I feel like the best course of action is for all of them to, and you know what, not even to do it for just then. I honestly feel like even when he gets out, the family should still continue to do some type of family counseling because there's still going to be residual hurt, residual beef, residual trauma that isn't just going to go away or why, or be washed away simply because a person gets better. It doesn't work that way, y'all. We would love for it to work that way. We would love for it to be you go get help and then everybody just be skipping through the tulips, but it just don't happen that way. But I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray y'all scrimps in the Lord. I will do that. So Jen and Sharif have a double date with Heather and his best friend, Big Daddy. Baby, that date was tied, delayed as fuck. Like, first of all, 
Big Daddy was big fat. Like, I, listen, it's one thing to be big and brolic and muscular. It's a whole nother thing to just have a whole bunch of fat sitting on top of fat. And it's just laying in, 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 in a subtle, nice way. You know what I mean? Kind of like how um it was on uh, Love and Hip Hop Atlanta when you had, um what was his name, girl? Um, Sierra's ex-husband. What was his name, girl? I don't forget the damn man name. I think she called him Rod. I can't think of his real name. But y'all remember on Sierra and his first season being up there when they was an all white and he ain't had no shirt on and he was sitting there in um in, in that white with that three month old pregnant belly and thinking that she was cute. That that's what that reminded me of. Um You know, Jen, if that's your friend, if that's your friend, if that's your friend, if I was her, you wouldn't be after that night. Come on now, Jen. Now you running around here saying this your home girl, this your good Judy. You know what she wanted. You know what she liked. Then you should have known that that date won't gonna go no damn well. Anyway, um, child. So Whitney inviting all of the ladies to Vegas. Mary gets the invitation, but doesn't go if Jen is going. And I'm just totally confused as to why. Like Mary, Mary, at this point, you are becoming a one trick pony and you're becoming boring. Your whole claim to fame of even getting on this show is because of the fact that your nasty ass married your damn grandfather under suspicious circumstances. Because I do not bit more believe that your grandmama left you all of her riches and glory and her man. I just don't believe it. I don't buy it. I believe that I believe what your family has to say. Um, I don't know why you got up here, got up on this thing. You are not a likable person. You are very boring. You're very catty. You're very petty. You're very selfish. And at your age, you're very delusional. And, and it, it is really sad. And it goes to show a lot about your upbringing. It obviously won't much if you running around here feeling like at your old tired ass age, fashions and bags and, 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 and shoes mean more than people and feelings and religion and what you speak and preach about on on that book. And it, girl, quiet as it's kept, if you knew anything about the damn Bible, your punk pussy ass wouldn't be nowhere up in the damn pulpit because bitches ain't allowed up there. Like, I, I, like, she just kills me because I'm confused. Last episode, you were strumming your pain with your fingers because you won't get an invited then now you're getting an invitation, but simply because Jen is there, now you're respectfully declining. Girl, Jen was going to be at the other shit that she was crying and whining on the FaceTime with your old ass husband about. Jen was there then and you really wanted to go and didn't get an invite. So what difference does it make now? No, your ass just wanted to be mean, hateful, nasty, and spiteful, but try to mask it up under the Holy Ghost. See, that's that, that, that's that nice, nasty shit that a lot of these Christian folks do, which is why a lot of people are turning away from the damn church now. Like, Jen, I mean, not Jen, Mary, go and get your goddamn life away. The bitch. I don't give a damn about you, your crocodile tears, or your fucked up ass feelings. I would say take it up with God, but God obviously don't like your ass that much. Moving on. Um, <clears throat> now here it is. This video is supposed to be about me cussing out Jen. I done messed around it in lightweight gay Mary ass song. So Lisa says that she finds it interesting Whitney sending her an invitation to Vegas and still haven't apologized to her. Eh, um, you know, Lisa, I hear you, but at the end of the day, Lisa, everything that this woman did, you had an issue with. Even before this situation happened, you still had an issue with Whitney. Everything, like, like, because see, you one of those people, see, you got a lot of Giselle Bryan in you, and I think that's why I just don't see it for you. Because you purposely go to things to, to, Instead of pointing out everything that's right with it, you find the one or two little measly flaws out of it and you and you create it into something big. You know, you know what I mean? You never really saw it for Whitney. So don't don't take this situation and try to misconstrue it as if, you know, oh, I was really cool with her. I was down for like four flat ties to a Cadillac with her, but then she did this situation and now I just don't see it for her and I don't trust her. Girl, bye. You ain't never seen it for Whitney and Whitney ain't did a damn thing to you. And another thing that gets me, I understand, yes, was Whitney wrong and messy for the way that she went about it? 1000% yes. 
at the end of the day, I am still baffled and confused why you still haven't gone to Mary and say, Mary, listen, Whitney told us this information that she said that she got it from you. Now, it's bad enough that she's running around here telling everybody secondhand information that she heard. But if me and you are cool, why are you sitting up there gossiping about me and, and, and Meredith to her any damn way? Like, I'm still confused about why Lisa or Meredith have yet to kick Jen or Mary in their damn back at this damn point. Moving on. Um, <clears throat> so Lisa comes late saying that she doesn't owe anybody any explanation as to why she's late. Actually, you do. This was a girl's trip that she invited you on. And common courtesy, common decency, since you so rich and fabulous, since you rich white woman, classy base. The rich, when I went to the rich white woman school of classy base one on one, the one thing that they damn show taught us is no matter how you feel about a bitch, if you gonna be late, call and let them know ahead of time. If you gonna be early, let them know ahead of time. If you already gonna be there so they don't need to make no special preparations for you, you let them already know that ahead of time. See, that's what real rich white women, classy-based women like myself do. See, I graduated from the school, and Funky Dineva was the uh, 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 the head doll in charge of the shit. I know how this shit goes. Again, this was another way for you to be mean, hateful, and nasty to Whitney. And, uh, and other than this situation, I'm not understanding why. She did nothing to you. Moving on. Lisa says that every time she's around her, she has a problem. No, the first time was, yeah, you did a nice gesture, but the people that you sent there messed up my stuff. Who else do I have to go to about that other than they boss, which is you? So you feel like because we friends or we friendly or at best, we co-workers, I should just be... At thankful that, yeah, you gave me your bottle services and yes, you gave me your servers, but they messed up my stuff. They broke my glasses. They drunk. Girl, they got drunk off of your damn supply. We ran out of liquor messing around with them. I'm not supposed to come to you and say nothing. I'm just supposed to let it go simply because it was a gift. Bitch, no. Like, that's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. So I'm sorry, Lisa. Your reasonings and your and that you're trying to make valid just don't make no sense to me. Moving on. Um, and again... Have, I mean, uh, Meredith, you almost found yourself on the bottom with Lisa asked last week. You redeemed yourself this week because Meredith says she doesn't think that what Whitney said came out of nowhere. Thank you so much, Meredith, for at least seeing and acknowledging what the hell I've been saying for the past couple of weeks now. There would be nothing. For Whitney to have brought up in any way, shape, or form, had Mary not laid down those seeds of doubt, and had Jen not run around here running her mouth, speaking about somebody else's marriages and 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 and, and um, <clears throat> what she could or could not be have hidden around there somewhere. You understand me? Like, Jen, if you want to talk about somebody, girl, why don't you go find Sharice's real, real wife and his real children and his real family? Because that's really who he wants to be with. Since we want to gossip and spread everybody else's business, let's gossip and spread about yours. Bitch. Moving on. Um, so Jen takes Heather to go shopping instead of going speed racing with Whitney, Lisa, and Meredith, which, in my opinion, was completely um, rude. It was complete disrespectful to Whitney because she still, I mean, other than this one situation, Jen, Whitney's done nothing to you. For you to be carrying on the way that you can, moving on. Um, Heather had to save Jen, uh, drunk ass from falling off the damn bar stool. Like, this is exactly why I still believe that Sharif has a real family, a real wife, a real kid, and a real home outside of this bull crap that he got with Jen. Like, I listen, uh, Jen, like, Jen is such a destructive, drunken mess. Like, girl, anywho, uh, Whitney apologizes to Mary Meredith and Lisa for what happened, saying that Mary doesn't speak for them. And listen, 
<clears throat> Lisa, I still don't like you, but I am going to extend the hand to lift you up. I love the way that you and Meredith handled Whitney in this situation. Y'all could have very well went in, let have cussed her out, made her feel bad about herself, made her feel worse about herself, but y'all didn't do that. Whitney apologized and Whitney took accountability for what she did. Whitney said, listen, I'm new to all of this, okay? I was trying to be a good friend to that bitch because she was arguing about how nobody is being really good friends to her. So when I heard this tidbit of information, I figured maybe I would try to be a good friend and let it be known about what Mary said. I take full responsibility for that. I apologize. I'm sorry. That's not what I wanted to have happen. And I'm really glad that Lisa, of all people, decided to come outside of her bullshit for two damn seconds to realize that everybody is human. Everybody makes mistakes. Nobody but Jesus Christ himself is perfect. Not even you, Lisa. You're not perfect. You're going to fall. You're going to stumble. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to hurt people's feelings. You're going to do things that you wouldn't ordinarily do because that's just life. You're no better than anybody. Like, I think that's the thing that pisses me off about Lisa is because she floats amongst these women as if they don't run in the same circle, as if none of them, as if she's the only one who, who has money, business, clout, you know, a, 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 a stand in, a title or anything like girl, all of y'all in the same damn circle. Get the fuck out of here with all of that shit. Like y'all rich hoes kill me. Um, but yeah, I love the way that y'all handled that. It was real grown lady woman sitting under the tree. Y'all said, listen, anything else that you hear about us from anybody else and it bothers you to your soul like that, do not go to them and do not go to nobody else. You come to us. You let us know. Let us handle that because that bitch don't speak for us. I was with it. So Jen and Heather talk about Whitney and Jen lets it be known that she's still mad at Whitney. Why? I do not know. Um, but don't worry, Heather is just as confused, befuddled, and bewildered as we all are because Jen was like, why the hell are we still talking about this? Like, we just went through this the last time we went down to the spa. You did all that damn crying, stumping around like a damn baby, having a damn temper chance of splashing the cameraman with water and I, I, I. Y'all hugged it out. You, she apologized. You forgave her. Y'all had a great time. Of course. Heather's going to be confused. Like, why are we still talking about this? Why is this still a problem or, or an issue? Um. <clears throat> uh, so then Heather asks her, are you blaming Whitney for you throwing your glass? And then she gets another battery in her back, goes off on a tangent, talking about the only reason why I haven't bitch slapped her yet is because she your friend. Put a one in the chat if you believe Jen is about that life and she would have bitch slapped anybody. Or put a two in the chat if you like I do and you just feel like that bitch is all talk and no bite. Let me put a one in the chat if you believe that she Monique. Put a two in the chat if you believe that she's a scary ass Candace Dillard. That's what I want you to do. Put a one in the chat. If you believe that Jen is Monique, put a two in the chat. If you believe that Jen is um, scary as Tweety Bird like I do, that bitch won't bust a grape in a damn fruit fight. Um, <clears throat> Heather feels like Jen's version of being a friend is being a henchman and following whatever she does or how she feels. And that was basically the end of the episode because Jen spent two, three minutes of our time being wasted, calling herself, going in and letting have. Jen, <coughs> Jen, you are like, Jen, you are like a Meiji rescue pet. Like, th that's how you act and that's how you behave. Very skittish, very loud, very rude, very, like, and she was absolutely right. Can't nobody be a real friend to you, Jen, because you don't know what a real friend is. A real friend, first of all, I don't want a bitch in my corner that can't think for themselves. I don't want a bitch in my corner that's going to yes me all day. I want somebody in my corner that knows how to let me know when I'm wrong, I'm wrong. And no matter how I may come off at them or whatever the case may be, they're going to stick by their guns. Bitch, you wrong. Jen don't want nobody like that. And see, you know what? I think that's why Jen hires so many, so many people, so many assistants, and she confuses the people that works for her with real people 
who who have real feelings and this, this, that, and this. See, when you got people that work for you, you pay their salary. So, of course, they're going to yes you all day. But when it's a friend, they're not going to yes you all day. They're going to let you know right is right and wrong is wrong. And I can't be around nobody who gets this upset or gets this mad simply because somebody says, I thought this shit was over with. Why are you behaving like this? Why does it mean this much to you? Why do we have to go through this? Like, I, girl, that was the end of the episode. Jen, that's all I'm going to give you, okay? That's all I'm going to give you. Like, lower nose. Because last night, Jen, oh my God, I promise y'all this, this video wouldn't have been monetized. Baby, she made me so goddamn hot watching that damn scene. I ain't know what to do with myself. And I'm really glad that Lisa, Meredith, and Heather is starting to see your ass for your works because it looks like next next episode, everybody gonna be standing behind Whitney's ass 1,010% as they should. As they should. And it's your damn fault, Jen. <sighs> That's another reason why I believe Sharif got a whole another family somewhere way across town. Because I just can't see a man putting up with Jen and her antics and not have something else on the side. That man got to have some type of relief when football is over with. I guess all that bleaching cream that, that your ass was doing and all that thick ass silicone, Gorilla Glue, Super Glue, Fixer Flat, 3M Scotch Tape and every damn thing else that you pumping in that ugly ass body. Girl, I'm gone because I said I won't going to do this and I'm not going to do it. I'm Jen not going to get my goat. Girl, I'm gone. Y'all drop down in the comments. Y'all let me know what y'all thought about last night's episode. It's picking up, y'all. I give last night's episode. I, I give it a B minus. I give it a B minus because baby, next week look like it's finna be some ish and I'm about to be all down for it, girl. Y'all let me know how y'all feel and I'm gone. Bye. What you giving, that's how we live it. Don't be mad at the system, it's simply how we've existed. I hear a lot of people talking like they politicians and choose to be an accountant because it's safe in a business.